Good evening ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a GameStop presentation. Here we have our re-emergence into the CGA action over at CyberGamer AU. It is going to be between Noxious Gaming and Bok Choi Bandits. This will be a two game series with uh, some points for the ladder up for grabs by both teams. They're in Division 3. Noxious are second. Bok Choi are number four. My name is Coldblood, and I have the pleasure of being joined by the recently engaged Niba. How are you, boss? Hello, sir. Thank you for having me on this lovely Monday evening. Uh, I am feeling quite well, and engagement is uh, quite well as well. But as you said, don't worry about my personal life. We're here for some League of Legends action on the Cyber Gamer Amateur Ladder. We're here into game number two, week two of the uh, 5v5 Amateur League, with over $1,000 worth of uh, prize money up for grabs towards the end of the season. As you said, both of these teams into week two, Noxious Gaming coming off with three points from the first week. That means they did win 2 nothing. but uh, Bok Choi did come away 1-1 against Encrypted, and now uh, they, uh, sorry, against uh, Crowd Control Gaming, and uh, they are on one point having the draw. So as you said, best of two series, and uh, three points up on grabs for the uh, win. One if you draw, and nutter if you get taken out at 0-2. So quite a lot of bit of pride uh, to, and points to be played for to uh, set these guys up for later in the season, you would think. But uh, all the bands have come out, mate, and... Uh, there you go. Like, the, what do we uh, what do we have banned so far? Well, for the side of Noxious Gaming, who are uh, ahead in the ladder thus far, uh, keep in mind, ladies and gents, you have to pay fifty dollars to enter your team into the comps. So these players have every reason to be here and be turning up. So for the side of Noxious on the left, we have Nocturne, Zinzao, and Vi banned out, which is uh, telling me that Feral Flare has uh, made its impact on the team of Noxious Neebs, and they do not want to go against anyone who can utilize it. No, that's very true. And then for the BCB guys, we have Thresh, Lee Sin, and Master Yi banned. So similarly banning out the junglers, particularly Yi, farming up the Feral Flare insanely fast, and this Thresh has a bit of a, uh, a footnote, although he was the first ban, so just uh, chucking some bans on the side of the supports. Already getting into the picks here, and I'm not surprised to see Oriana picked up here, Neebs, in Respawn Lin, which I just finished casting on the weekend, which was uh, almost 17 hours straight casting, so that was great fun. Oriana was incredibly highly prioritized, so in the Australian meta, she's seen as a very strong pick. Yeah, it'll be very interesting to see how she's used tonight and see whether or not uh, she is as effective as you do claim to be. And I uh, will make a quick note that to any shoutcaster who does 17 hours in a row, as I will obtain to, uh, is an absolute crazy bastard. So uh, please don't kill me cold blood. And uh, for all you listeners at home, I promise, uh, whilst I am still quite new to the uh, low casting scene, please go easy on my butthole if I uh, happen to stuff up some of the other calls and moves. But we will do our best and have a bit of fun and uh, settle back in, grab yourself a beer for the next two hours. Anyway, we do have also that Morgana for BCB, as uh, that was their two picks after Kha'Zix picked straight away for the team of Noxious, followed by Ziggs and Lulu now. So we'll see what the next two picks are with 12 seconds remaining, and uh, see what they're going to, see what will go here, and uh, possibly looking for their mid and top laners. Yeah, it, I, I like the pickups of Oriana and Morg against the Kazakhs because they both have shielding capabilities for a, a, a higher priority target. Mm. And Kazakhs, as we know, loves to jump into the squishies and tear them apart in a, a single combo of his spells. So some pretty intelligent pickups there. Ziggs and Lulu were the pickups for our Noxious Gaming fellas. So uh, we, we can assume that Lulu will be going bot. Similarly, she can help negate the devastation of a command shockwave out of Oriana does a huge amount of damage to the squishies once she's picked up her death cap and her grail so the wild growth will help in dealing with that we have the Evelyn and the Corky picked up here for our side of the bok choy bandits so mm -hmm. I wonder if they'll be picking Karma to synergize with the Corky yeah we'll see what um, see what support they decide to go with there are quite a few options that we have seen um, in recent uh, recent meta pools, but it'll be very interesting to see. But that Nasus and Caitlyn now picked up the final two. We'll see whether or not they lock them in or whether or not they are tr trolling us. I can't really see yet. There's the Renekton, and uh, I was going to say he was going to go with the Nasus over probably uh, one of your shiv shivs or your uh, Renekton up top. I would be very surprised, but he has locked it in. So we will see what Senui gets uh, for the last pickup. 
Whether there it was be the, Karma. Yeah, well, or, there was uh, the top laner available. I realize that they have Morg, so uh, probably wouldn't go for the Karma. Morg Corky still capable of a decent bit of damage, but uh, the the top laner was not picked up for Bok Choi, so I think if they went with the Narsus, who is otherwise known as Susan, it would have been a bit of a gamble because they could pick someone very strong early on, like the Renekton, and really bully him around. So I think the Renekton's much more of a safe pick. Also gives them a, a a bit of a early to mid game leeway to uh, let the Zigs and the Kazakhs reach the stage where they start becoming very very dangerous. We're on to the last pick up here, and it will be the Shen Master here, Neeb. So we're a bit of a throwback to uh, halfway through the season three when Shen's ult became a massively long cooldown, but has been uh, recently seeing a resurgence with uh, how much health is stacked by the top laners these days. Well, he does also have the teleport as to go with it. So, oh, we'll have uh, to make sure we don't talk about the summoner spells uh, till uh, the players are in. Well, he, he is the last one to pick, though, so I yeah. think uh, the other team I won't be able to. That's why I waited for it. And now. then Shen but does have an inbuilt teleport, so. He does, too. So, But uh, you, as you said, uh, it will be interesting to see uh, how the uh, how they go. Um, and this, uh, as you did say, the reduces the long cooldown. But uh, Shen's still a global presence, which does make. Um, for a lot of interesting uh, pushing and uh, and counter pushing, just being very aware of that uh, global presence. So I don't know. I don't know. It'd be very interesting to see here as the uh, the, cap, the clock will count down, and we will begin our three minute wait before we can jump in with them. And uh, with the players jumping into the loading screens, we no longer have to reveal them on Twitch. And as we can see, Summoner Heal is the name of the of the game here, Neebs, with uh, a five player record. Picking it up here. Both of the mid laners, Ziggs and Oriana, love to stay safe in the laning phase, use their AoE clearing potential to farm up and become a very strong mid game presence. So, foregoing the barrier in exchange for heal, which uh, definitely makes a lot of sense here. Particularly with the Evelyn and the Kazakh's jungles, it means that they can go a little bit more aggressive in those uh, level 5 to 6 dives and get away with it. And uh, both the top laners rock and the teleport makes sense for Renekton to be able to follow Shen, and it just means Shen's global presence going to be strengthened by that summoner spell pickup. So uh, very very passive picks up pickups across the board. I think it would be safe to say. Yeah, I think um, I don't know. Looking at these teams, there is not really there there is, there is quite a lot of potential for for a lot of games to uh, for a lot of games to be had. But uh, I don't know. As you said, with all the heals coming out. I know we'll, it'll be very interesting to see which team will take the initiative uh, in the uh, opening stages of the game and see how this game unfolds. So uh, I don't know. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna, what I'm expecting with this game, Cold Blood, but uh, hopefully I'll be surprised. Yeah. Well, with the Evelyn jungle on on the uh, the Bok Choi bandits, the the other team's gonna have to be very aware that she could be you know right in the river by their lane and they're going to have to play a little bit more passively for it. Thankfully for them, they do have very safe lanes. Renekton is a bully, Caitlyn is a bully, Ziggs is a bully. So uh, having the strong laning champions means that Evelyn is going to be less effective. And then, of course, everyone and their mother taking heal will assist with that as well. For the other side, Kha'Zix doesn't have really a lot of options for ganking either with uh, how difficult it would be to lock down Corky and Morgana. Oriana, probably the most vulnerable, but even then she can speed herself up, she can shield herself, and she can use the ball for vision should she need to. She's also packing the summoner heal. And then, of course, Shen just going to taunt away if he comes near. So this may just be a farming game for our assassin junglers. Well, we'll see how they go. I mean, Kha'Zix is very dangerous if you get, get given the chance to jump on them. And I think with that Eve out there, Vision will be the name of the game. I wouldn't, I would expect quite a few uh, trinkets, all the yellow trinkets, and possibly a couple of wards early game, just to make sure that uh, that Eve, uh, that Eve doesn't really cause that much of of a nuisance. I mean, uh, having seen quite a few games recently, I do know that uh, the level two, like sometimes they will uh, go for the ward rather than their early. You know, early items just to allow for that vision. We'll see whether or not they do that. I know from uh, from the boys on Noxious, but uh, look again, we're about to get start loading into this game and uh, and let the uh, skin battle commence. Yeah, the most important fight of the night, the skin battle. I'll have to see which bring, uh, which team can bring along the mo the oh, the most best skins. Is better to say, 
awful, awful grammar. I've been speaking English 21 years, Neebs. Use grammar too well. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll have a look at the level 1 power for both teams as well. A shout-out to videos 2325, Flavor HD, LOL, and here in, in the Twitch chat. A lot of... Uh, a lot of support for Synchro on the side of BCB, who will be playing the Oriana here, Neebs. So, mm. uh, the, the, the fanboys are coming out on the Twitch. We are now into the skin battle, ladies and gents. Looks like uh, a lot of platinum players in this game. We've got Earthrider Corky, which is awesome, Neebs. I don't know if you know this, but when Earthrider Corky crits, Earth actually throws his spatula at them as, as the no. attack animation. There you go. I haven't actually seen that, but yeah. uh, wow. I can uh, I can honestly say from personal experience a patch a spatula to the face is not a nice experience. <laughs> I'd love so, to uh, I'd love I to hear the story does, there. It does make well, <laughs> it will take a lot longer than we have in the loading time. So perhaps for another time. But what we what uh, looking at this Coldblood, I will get. What is your prediction for this game? What do you, what who are you favoring and uh, and why? Well, just because I've come from Respawn, where Oriana was incredibly successful, the edge is uh, going to be going to the side of uh, Bok Choi Bandits, particularly since the Corky, with his AD ratios on the Phosphorus Bomb buffed, and so much protection. You've got Stand United, you've got Command Protect, you've got Black Shield. It's going to be very difficult to stop him putting out that burst damage, so... I think that Bok Choy Bandits have a really good comp, although saying that Noxious Gaming, very, very strong early on. So it's really going to be up to them to make their presence known early on here. They do have uh, quite a strong uh, team fight, honestly, with uh, the AoE between the Dominus of Renekton and then all of Ziggs' stuff. It's going to make it very easy for the Kha'Zix to get his resets and start going on a rampage. In addition, Caitlyn very strong at cleaning up fights as well. So if we can see big Ziggs AoE into the Renekton jumping and maybe using the Wild Growth as some more disruption, it's uh, they're quickly going to take the fights with how much just single target destruction they've got. Yeah, that's a very good point. But uh, we should go through the team list for you and who has picked what. Uh, before, uh, whilst we are on this pause, so for Noxious Gaming, we have Outrage taking Kha'Zix, uh, Anorik as Caitlyn, uh, Abyss as Lulu, Bazzy as Renekton, and uh, Shinny finishing up, rounding out the team as Ziv in the mid lane. And for the B, uh, the Bok Choy Band, it's the BCB, Synchro, Oriana in the mid lane with uh, Ozzy, Oze, I should say, Oze as Corky down as your AD. We have uh, Fal Fal Q Falco Falco QQ. Let's be calling Falco. It's easier. As Eve in the jungle, uh, Casey as Morgana support and Senui as Shen in the top lane. So we do have that pause. So probably some connection issues pretty early on, uh, Cold Bud. But uh, as you said, this is going to be very interesting to see who will get the initiative here. I think uh, you've picked BCB. I would like to see Noxious take this one out. I think if they can probably uh, contain the Evelyn in the early game, I think they may have the slight advantage. They can't let to Oriana either, but that will come down to Outrage and his support of uh, the mid lane with Shinny as Ziggs. But I, I don't, I'm very interested to see how this plays out. And uh, look, really, any result. They do have a best of two series, so it will be interesting to see what they actually do in, uh, in game number two and how this affects them. But we still have one game to go before we get to that point. Yes, yeah, certainly. So, uh, with Noxious being at number two in the division, and Bok Choy Bandits being number four, Noxious automat automatically come in with a uh, a little bit of an uh, uh, what's the opposite underdog when you're the the favorite? Uh, well, I guess. Yeah, you'd be the favorite. I'd yeah. Say. <laughs> underdog sounds cooler. And uh, Bok Choy Bandits, they are the underdog, but uh, you know, look, already their departure from the base is synchronized, so uh, we could be seeing an early invade here. I was going to have a look at the level one power, the capture of uh, level one, the capture power from the Bok Choy Bandits is incredibly strong. You've got Dark Binding, you've got the Taunt, and uh, you've got the Vision of the Oriana Ball. The Noxious Bot Lane are going to have to get the heck out of here very quickly, and are going to be caught by that Binding Phosphorus Bomb. Will come down. Will he manage to get Flash? And Taunt comes out from Shen. They will get the Flash over the wall. Evelyn is going to be flashing along with the Corky Summon Heal. Will give her some health and some movement speed to get away. And it looks like when all is said and done, a uh, huge amount of Summoner spells will be traded back and forth. But with so much heals and exhausts and whatnot, 
It's just uh, not to be, Neebs. So, some very aggressive move coming out of our challenges, the Bok Choy Bandits. We have uh, a total of three flashes and an exhaust burned on their side. Yep. And for the other side, only a flash and a heal. So, actually sets the BCB guys back a little bit, except for the mental attitude. Now, Noxious Gaming are going to be on their toes a little bit. Yeah, Noxious, very lucky to come away from that one unscathed. I mean, some very good flashes over the wall and support from Lulu there to allow Caitlyn to get out of there. However, uh, as you did say, uh, you know, the more summoner spells have been burnt on the side of BCB, so very interesting. However, if that first blade would have gone down, of course, not fully worth until about the four minute mark, scaling up from about two minutes to four. So it would have only been worth about 60%, but still, more mental, uh, it would have been a more uh, a mental hit than anything else, I think to the boys of Noxious had they uh, had they got on the back foot so early on. But uh, look, the game is underway and we're in the mid lane. Shinny is actually trading quite well with Synchro there, dropping in the bombs and uh, forcing him back a bit. So uh be interesting to see if Ziggs uses his long range poke to keep Orion out of here. And uh, look, very good start from the boys, from Noxious. I think they're going to have to rebound uh, quite strongly here just to make sure that they keep BCB in check. Yeah, definitely fair enough. So I'll be looking up at the top lane a lot. Bazzy as the Renekton, definitely going to have the advantage over Shen early on until some more points in the feint uh, will be picked up as long with the uh, the sustain of Vorpal Blade. So Shen's going to have a little bit of a tough time, but if he can get his Giants built without uh, much contestion, he'll, he'll certainly be fine there. In the mid lane, it looks like uh, even, as, as we said, Neebs, although uh, a lot of a lot of harass going between the two mids here, having that range. And down the bottom, it looks like Corky's going to be forced out. Looks like no summoners were used in that trade. But being forced out this early is definitely bad, particularly when you're against the strongest lane ADC. Yeah, it's very, very uh, bad for him to go back. But look, he's still alive. No money is being given, traded yet. But uh, unfortunately, that will keep him out of lane for longer than he would like to. And uh, that may cause some uh, issues. Oh, up the top, top lane. lane, yes. Over the top lane, they've come in now. Great start, straight on, straight on to Eve. That's a great vision battle. That we were, what we were saying before. They need to keep the wards up. They have ever been caught. First blood to Renekton. That is Bazzy, and that will give him a good start and make him even more of a threat in the first lane in the first cup uh, opening periods here against Senui. Sen Senyu? I oh, know. Senyui. Sen Sen Senyui. Sen. Okay. Sen. <laughs> nice and easy until we know how to pronounce their name. But he does have the double buffs now, blue and uh, blue and red. So very well done. He's going to be even more of a threat. But uh, look, Sen is not afraid to be oh, not afraid to give him a couple of hits. That turret hitting him three times, just forcing him out now. And uh, look, some great trades as Kazik is coming up top. He's going to be looking for it as well. However, that ward is in the tribe, which he does know all about it. And look, we are not. Uh, lack for action in this game, and that's what we like to see. Noxious are bullying uh, out the bok choy guys all over the place here at top, at bot, and in mid. They're forcing them back. Synchro trying to get off his recall. The Stealth Eve hanging around. Bad luck by Falco QQ to be spotted by the Kazakhs. We saw that snake exclamation mark appear above his head and straight away jumped onto the Evelyn. And with uh, Bazzy on Renekton coming down, they're able to take that one away. So the gold at the moment, bang on a thousand in advantage for the Noxus Gaming guys. Bottom lane looking disastrous for our Bok Choy Bandits with uh, that early force out. And of course they did not have the flash up on the Corky, so he wasn't able to escape. Although, oh, he, I mean he escaped, but uh, he, yeah. very vulnerable with the lack of that summon. Although, to be fair, Anarch had his down too. So. Yeah, I would just like to point out as well that everyone has gone for the yellow trinket, so a lot of vision it will be had across this map. No uh, no sweepers as of yet, and I think that's kind of a testament to everyone just being very careful of the fact of the jungle roam of Kha'Zix and Ev, so that's very interesting. However, the bottom in the bottom lane, as we see, Ev has now come from around the back of Tribush. Anarchy will be, Anarik will be caught out of position, trying to get the first blood for his side, but retreats to the tower in time, and will be able to use the cover from there. However, Corky is very low, and Absus will jump in with the flash. And uh, well done with the Glitter Lance there to be able to take out that first uh, first kill for him. So uh, that Lulu, he, look, they overextended just a little bit too late, didn't get out of there in time, and uh, we're made to pay the price. And now uh, that is two kills, nothing in favour of Noxious. Uh, really good work there. So, 
look, they've, they've started off well, and, and like I said at the beginning of the game, they're going to have to pressure them and uh, make sure that uh, they don't get into a groove here. Because having a look, I would say that uh, realistically, uh, I would say that uh, the B uh, BCB boys are a bit more of a late game team. They will need to make it through these opening probably 20 minutes uh, relatively close if they want to uh, probably stand a chance. But uh, look, they haven't started the right way, and that's the plan. Yeah, no, they're uh, they're definitely going to have to be careful here. The summoner spell at the bot was definitely the reason that the blue team were able to turn that around. Beautiful play out of Abyssus on the Lulu for uh, flashing and getting that kill there. Kha'Zix was coming in. It probably would have been uh, a little too late, though. As in the mid lane, a massive amount of schoolyard bullying going on by Shinny here. Threw out the ult earlier on and did a decent bit of damage to Ori with the command protect. She was able to survive and a summoner heal is available should it become required. Falco QQ not able to do a whole heck of a lot early on in this game is drastically falling behind in the CS to Outrage who is coming in from behind on this Ariana Neebs. They've got to keep in mind summoner heal is up. The Satra Charge will not go out and actually the Stand United along with the heal will barely keep her alive but the stun of the top lane means that Shen will stay up there. There will be no taunting under the tower and a nice use of cooldowns by BCB to ensure Orianna lives to farm another day, although she is getting further and further behind in the CS. Yep, she is uh, getting a bit further behind at 56, uh, 57 now placed 30 in terms of your CS, so uh, Ziggs slowly getting away, currently does have the Chalice of Harmony and a Doran's Ring to protect him, whereas Orianna going double Doran's Ring as the opening play here, as well with uh, well with the Null Man Magic Mantle, just for a little bit of MR, but uh, look, she is falling further and further behind, forced out of lane, whereas Ziggs will now drop out of lane to go by some more. So look, he's further getting a little bit away, but uh, look, still not out of it yet. I mean, we, we do talk about the snowball effect. They do uh, they are what, creeping in on 2,500 gold lead, but uh, look, that's not, that's kind of really a one or two dragons and uh, just some smart plays from them, so they just got to be very careful here. Um, but Noxious will be feeling like they are in the driver's seat right now, and they will be feeling quite comfortable, having pushed up most of the lanes uh, in this early game, in this early eight and a half minutes. Yeah, with, with, we pointed it out before. Oh, in the bottom lane, Corky, very careful. You haven't used that Valkyrie yet away. Sorry to interrupt you, Coldblood. That's but, all good. <laughs> uh, they are exchanging blows in the bot lane, uh, Anarik. And uh, Absis, very, very aggressive here, making sure Ozzo is not going to get any CS. Kate's close really to six. they got to be careful. Yeah. Ace in the hole, almost available. Yeah, she is. And it'll, But have a look at their CS scores at the moment, how much bully. It's 60 plays 25, and uh, Ozzo uh, is not having a good time in that mid lane at this point in time. But as we say, that mid lane, Oriana getting very, very deep. He got the super mega bomb from Jimmy. We'll grab him. Come from the back of the hand. Falco gets in there, but outrage. Great timing, we'll get a two for nothing trade there and the assist to Ziggs and uh, wow, that is a great trade with the jump and the slash. And uh, it looks like we're getting four for nothing at the moment and uh, Kha'Zix heading uh, toward that dragon and just to give him that gold and just keep putting the pressure on. Okay, yeah, so a uh, disastrous move for BCB in the mid lane there, well played by Noxious Gaming. It's, it's interesting to see Outrage going with the Taste Their Fear evolution. You normally see Kha'Zix's these days go with Void Assault, giving it another second of stealth. A, uh, I think a little bit more speed? No, you get another cast and 50% damage reduction while active. So, upgrading the Claws means that his assassination potential is going to be through the roof. Hyper carry Kha'Zix! Yeah, he's going to be a little bit more vulnerable, but the way this is going, I mean, you've got Wild Growth, and you're against a team that's not going to really be able to cause much threat to him, uh, at least for the next couple of minutes. So, evolving the claws, I do agree with it here. Yeah, I think it is a good move. I think they realize that they're not being pressured so much, so really they want to keep the pressure on by adding as much attack damage as they possibly can. So, in this particular instance, I think it is the right idea, but we'll have to see that. You still have to be very careful as he does become a little bit squishy at that point in time. However, there are four BCB boys closing in on the bottom tower on Anik. She is in, uh, in, in between a rock and a hard place. Corp is finally getting it down with the machine gun. And they will now go after their second kill. There's the flash. Great work from uh, Outrage coming in from behind. They're still alive somehow. There goes Lulu. Finally down by Renekton from Bazzi with a great teleport in. Makes it a two for one trade. And uh, look. Two for two. Two for two, I should say. Yes, sorry. They are going hunting. That's all. Will they get it? I don't know. They will have to back out of there, cold blood. 
Four. Okay, so uh, poor Evelyn and Oriana caught behind the blue tower here for uh, for Bok Choi Bandits. Two kills picked up on the Caitlyn and the Lulu. Definitely will help them out here. And they and the uh, the BCB guys, they will be able to push up at the top. But uh, losing their jungler and their mid certainly not going to help their case here, as they uh, desperately need as much farm as possible. Is Quark, well, the, the, the saving grace is Oz 64 is going to get some much needed uh, recovery time in the bottom lane here. But as soon as I say that, Anarch going to come out of the fog of war and force him back. So, how much damage is done to the uh, tier 1 at the top? A decent bit, honestly. And uh, Shen, I do believe his teleport not far off of coming off of its cooldown here. Does he have enough for his Sunfire? He's getting closer and closer as they just go mano a mano up the top. But it's kind of two brick walls of whacking each other at the moment. Although Bazzy's starting to do more and more damage. Does have the tier mat. So his on-demand burst going to be insane. In the mid lane, we have Oriana being dived. Can she possibly survive? Protect and heal are uh, not going to be enough to get her out. That taste there. Fear damage going to be absolutely insane at the top lane. We have Falco QQ trying to chase down Bazzy. But he's just such a low level. Level 3 and hate spike not going to be nearly enough to tear through this brick wall of a crocodile. With uh, the mid tower going down. Blue team migrating up the top, Neebs. Yep, up they come. They're trying to uh, close in on there, on Falco and uh, the Shen, yeah, that is Sen. And so, look, they will. I don't think they're going to get there in time. The Super Mega Bomb, though, from, from Ziggs gets the great. That was, as I say that, they knew what was happening and used that ult to perfection, forced him back out of the bush. Now give them the six kill lead. And having a look at that gold lead is uh, 7k. One dragon uh, has gone to them and two towers now. That is the top and middle tier one towers are both down. And uh, look, the bottom tower really hasn't been pressured that much. But I think uh, Anarch and uh, Absus have been more focused on keeping out their opponent laners rather than pushing the lane, which has actually worked quite well for them as it meant that uh, the other two lanes have uh, got to uh, push their lanes up to a point now where they can uh, have a bit of uh, control of the jungle of uh, BCB. So look, they are pretty much, they've watered two wards top side and uh, of the jungle and are now one in the bottom side. So vision control is the name of the game at the moment. They want to know everything and everything about the position of the uh, of BCB. But as I say that in the mid lane, uh, Sen having a Shinny and uh, Falco is coming in cold one. Yeah, will he be able to escape here? He knows that Evelyn is it. Nice satchel charge. Going to be used to try and disengage. Shen actually going to back off. Leave Falco. QQ to his state. They will get the taunt onto Shinny, but the blue team are coming in here. Flash and wild growth used. Can Sang Yue possibly get out of here? He's being chased. Oh. A little Lance will... Uh, well, may, uh, may say the name of the game, the flash forward by the Caitlyn, but she's not going to be able to break through that command, protect, and Shen manages to get out thanks to that chain vest he picked up. Kazi going to do a beautiful soul shackles, and it will mean that Oza64 will take down the Kate, and Lulu will possibly go down here as well. The rocket will take it low enough for Lulu to take up the last hit. Falco QQ will also go down, but Cinco manages to get out a two for one, actually going in Bok Choi's favor there. The only thing is the tier 2 in the mid coming under a lot of fire. Stand United and Teleport now available for Shen. And some fantastic play coming out of Bok Choi Bandits. They may not be done yet, but Dark Binding will land under Shinny. And what they started before, this entire thing started by Ziggs being chased, will finally conclude with his death. He'll explode in the air. And the entirety of the Noxious Gaming guys have to fall back with the blue buff that Zig stole going over to Sengu AG on the Shen, who will be thanking his lucky stars that he picked up a chain vest. It definitely saved him from the cave. Yeah, very lucky. Look, he, he got a bit greedy, went for the kill, but unfortunately uh, was made to pay the price for sticking around for as long as he did. But uh, look, at the end of the day, they are still have the lead. But they are slowly crawling their way back in this first game of this best of two series, the BCB uh, Bok Choi Bandits. So, look, we're 15 minutes in. It is a 7k gold lead. And uh, look, they're not out of it, but they really do need to put some pressure on some objectives, I would think, to give them, uh, to get them back into this game. Uh, they need to put the pressure on Noxious. They need to control where Noxious are going. And they need to make sure that uh, you know they don't give away any more easy kills because if they allow them to snowball now, um, it's going to become even harder to get back in this game. However, that uh, I reckon I think when Falco uh, starts getting uh, getting his hate spike, it just uh, 
a little bit more powerful. He will become a very dominant presence at the moment. They are controlling the vision game in their own jungle, but they really haven't decided to do anything in uh, Noxious, Noxious's jungle at all. They uh, Look, they're just trying to reset themselves, it would appear. And uh, look, good work. Good work from both teams at the moment. I would say Noxious with the slight advantage at the moment. Yeah, 7,000, a little bit more than slight, I believe, but uh, it's going well. The oh, Mega Inferno oh. Bomb at the bottom, he's in the hole, Oza64 will take it, and Falco QQ, will he be able to ward off the Kazakhs long enough? Outrage does get Agony's Embrace use on him, but he will get the kill in the end. Doesn't have the wing, so he doesn't get a reset, but Wild Growth use on Outrage to keep him alive, and now Kate is here to join in with the Ziggs Mega Inferno Bomb starting that off, and Shinny getting there just in time to witness the fall of the T1 at the bot, and now Dragon will be will uh, be the next objective taken in this cycle of destruction from Noxious. Poor Shen, he did use the Stand United, but it was not enough, and now Buzzy going to be flashing on top of him. I don't think Shen will be able to avoid this one. Cold the Meek will be the final nail in the coffin as Dragon goes the way of Noxious Gaming. A 10,000 gold lead, or a little bit over, will now be accrued by Noxious Gaming. And Neves, I was just saying, Dragon would be great for Bok Choi Bandits at this point. But uh, yeah, that's a uh, that, that's that's far uh, far away and gone. And as you pointed out before, the vision control for Noxious Gaming is outstanding. Although we got to hand it to Bok Choy Benz, they've got some great defensive wards set up. Yeah, they're basically trying to control their jungle at the moment. They don't want uh, they want to know where Noxious are in their jungle there, and they have been doing quite well. But however, they have been getting caught out in lane. I think that's really what's been done. But a great, a great. Super bomb there from Zig <laughs> finds Ev once again. Unfortunately, uh, that man there, uh, Shinny, he has been on fire at the moment. He is, uh, he's only 3 1, it's 3 1 and 4, but his, uh, his bullying presence at the moment has been absolutely superb. But he's not done yet. Tries to put the spell, uh, tries to put the satchel down on Kazi. Trying to grab this Morgana kill, but uh, we'll have to settle now for uh, a turret kill. I think they'll be very happy. Will they be able to get here? Yeah, they should do. And that is the first tier 2 tower of the game. But quite worryingly though, that is the first tier 2 before the Bok Choi Bandits have even got one tier 1 down. And I think that uh, the pressure is starting to get to them at the moment. Uh, and the uh, It's just the continual split pushing from the boys of Noxious. And the continual pressure is just forcing them back into their base. There is the ace in the hole on the Synchro. But uh, forcing them out. They will go for their first in hip turret here. And uh, look, they're not done yet. So... Cold blood, they are just on fire. Gonna be destroying this tier 3 here. Dark Binding will go down. Doesn't stop them too much though, as Glitter Lance will hit a few members of Bok Choy Bandits and Anark on the Kate going to zone them back. And Ziggs fantastic at the zone control as well. Going to be jumping onto Corky. Summon a heal will allow him to survive. Bazzy pops the level 2 Dominus. So we'll be able to tank another Mega Inferno Bomb will come down and spell the end of Eve's reign. Shen is in the mix now, but Kazakh's gonna get another assassination on to the Corky. He does have his wings now, so he'll be able to reset on top of the tanky Shen. Will go down. Shinny, is he going to go down to the last clockwork windup of Oriana? He does indeed. Kay's doing his absolute best to survive. His summoner heal will mean that he actually is going to tank the both of uh, Lulu and uh, Kazix. And actually, after the inhibitor did go down, Noxious Gaming goes in a little bit too deep, and the sole surviving member, Bazzy, is uh, running with his leg, uh, with his uh, with his tail between his legs. So nice defense by the Bok Choy Bandits, but uh, losing their inhibitor may be the beginning of the end. Yeah, you have to ask, was it a little too late for that engage? They did wait until uh, they did basically counter engage there, which is what they eventually got uh, got all the kills. But uh, they did lose their inhib turret and the inhibitor by the in mid lane. And uh, look, that is very damaging for them at the moment. We'll have to, obviously, that five minute timer now for that inhib respawn, but the super minions on the way down the mid lane is going to cause a, a lot of pressure. The question is now, what do Noxious do? Do they push here, try to focus down the uh, BCB boys, or do they group up and push? Looking like they're going to do a bit of a split push here. Caitlyn heading bot lane, and they uh, look like they want to control the enemy jungle at the moment. In the oh. board. <laughs> The long-range ultimate's going to force Synchro the heck out of there. They're trying to relieve as much pressure as they can and uh, take a little bit of the jungle. Synchro, you got to back up, boss. Hibiscus is... Uh, will he interrupt? No, the Black Shield 
will mean that uh, Lulu's flash damage potential not going to be there. Renekton going to jump on Shen at the top, but uh, Senyuai looks like he will be alright to get out of this one. Their gap closes have been used, and now the Siege at the bottom tier 3 will commence with Super Minion streaming into the base, with uh, and, and the, the low levels of the Bok Choi Bandits means that it is very difficult for Holder Small Up. They will land a binding under the tower. Abyxus is going to try... Abyss sucks, sorry. Is going to try and zone the enemy away from the tower, but the super minions are just so strong against level 10s and 9s, and uh, the pawds will come out. We'll try and find out what's going on here, Neebs, but uh, it was called by the blue team, with uh, the good guy, Bok Choy Bandit's going to allow them to get the pawds off. Interestingly enough, Neebs, I was looking up what Bok Choy actually means. It seems to be uh, some kind of Chinese cabbage used in herbal medicine and in cuisine. So, there you go, they're the cabbage obviously, bandits. Obviously, uh, we cannot end uh, for all of us at home. We can obviously tell that CB has never really been to a Chinese restaurant before. <laughs> I'm unlucky and uncultured. Uh, uh, that's alright though, but uh, look, whilst this has been happening, there it is, Shinny has left the game, so probably having some connection issues, so hopefully she should come back in very shortly. But he has been very devastating. However, Kazik's the man of the hour, 8, 1 and 5, and uh, that is of course outrage for Noxious, so he's doing very well. Uh, look, on the other side, Ev, Ev uh, is not had the best game, 0, 7 and 3, and uh, only the uh, tail, uh, Spirit of the Elmwolves is really the show for it, so she's been having a very tough game, has been on the, end, the receiving end of the uh, Super Mega Inferno bombs, I think at least four times, and uh, that hasn't been... That's doing 680 damage right in the middle. That Mega Inferno yeah, bomb. Uh, now look, and she really has got no uh, no magic resist at all, and uh, that's pretty much all going straight into her. Yeah, so I'll just figure out what exactly is going on. So uh, the red team are going to unpause as soon as they're ready. They are now, Neebs. Hopefully, your Skype is uh, not stuffing up as the tier 3 at the bot will be falling down here so yeah Neba going to drop out hopefully he can get that sorted the inhibitor is going to fall here Lickety split with Renekton split pushing up at the top Sangui on the Shen is actually going to land a torn on to Katsuki he does have the Randuin so he's not the best target to group up on the assassination will come in onto the Evelyn now Renekton is deep in another fantastic soul shackles out of the Morgana the shockwave not so much and now Bazzi will uh, well he won't be able to get onto the Orion thanks to the summoner heal binding used on to the Caitlyn which will force them back Mega Inferno Bomb goes off it does take down Seng Yui on the Shen just devastating news for the Bok Choy Bandit. That is their front line right there. The Outrage is forced back out. Hex Trinker definitely paying itself off with saving him there. The first of the Nexus Towers will fall with two Super Minions per wave coming to their base. They are quickly running out of options to what to do here. Noxious Gaming going to back out for the time being with their health bars relatively low, particularly Outraged. And uh, we'll have to see where they decide to take their onslaught of destruction here. Just quickly try and call Neebs. Sorry, ladies and gents. Skype being uh, as wonderful as always. How are you, Neebs? Uh, I don't know what happened there, but... Uh, Much better. You, uh, we, I can actually hear you now, so things looking good. So, yeah, hopefully uh, we can get the communications issues sorted. Seng Yui, he does have the TP available, I believe. Uh, Renekton's teleport was used up in the last fight to get there in time. And I have to point out, Kaze's Morgana has had some brilliant soul shackles thus far. He always hits multiple people and always at least one priority target. Forces them back or forces them to cop a stun. So I really like his positioning in these fights. Unfortunately, it is to no avail. Hmm. I would just like to point out that the lack of NBN makes me sad face quite a lot. Sad face, Panda, I don't have NBN, bro. I, uh, at respawn, I had NBN, and then I come back to this, it's like, oh. <laughs> nah. Enough about our personal issues. And, uh, look, at top lane, Bazzy has been caught out by another Soul Jacker from Case, but he's un uh, uh, undaunted at all. Coming back and actually forcing them both out, but as we say that, there's been the battle over Red, and, uh, Oriana is caught out again. There's the back room from Ozzy, trying to cut out Wolf Gap 2, but the double kill coming in from, uh, from Anorik. It's great work using the net to get out of here. There's the triple kill with a great from a great. Oh, that was a great jump in from Kazik. That is outrage. And uh, look, Morgana is running away. Will be called out there. There's Renekton with the flash in, and there is the ace. That could be possibly GG. 
But uh, look, it depends on how quick this push is, but they are not wasting any time. The Super Minion Wave coming in from top lane. They will push this turret down very quickly and go for game number one. Will they be able to get it here? I think they will. Yes, they will. There's the surrender. And uh, look, game number one in favor of Noxious. Only a 24-minute one. Really a demolishment, I think you could say, CV. Yeah. Yeah, the very dominating performance from our Noxious Gaming guys here. They will pick up a point for themselves to try and move on to number one. The Bok Choy Bandits are behind from the start and were never really given enough breathing room to mount a comeback. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. We will be back with Game 2 in just a second. We will have to nominate an MVP here, Niba. With the Medjai's on Sheeny, he's definitely a candidate. Uh, you were a fan of Outraged Kha'Zix, though. So what are you thinking here? Ooh, it's a real tough choice. It will end up being uh, between Sheeny and uh, Kha'Zix. Uh, at the end of the day, though, I'm thinking I'm going to have to give it to Kha'Zix. His overall map presence and his, uh, and his pressure uh, just everywhere seems to have really helped out uh, the team in general. I would like to give a special mention to Sheeny for his uh, bu bullying play, but also the bottom lane also had that as well. I just think that the Kha'Zix was probably, uh, probably the uh, good to my three votes. Yeah, well, um, yeah, I'll have to give it to Outrage as well. So congratulations for your MVP. We'll be back with Game 2 in just a minute here. Ladies and gents, don't go anywhere. This is Coldblood and Neba signing out for now.